Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. Today we are looking at chemistry from 4, um, chapter 4, which is on the periodic table. And honestly, this kind of question is very, very common. Like every single exam that I sit for, I just get these kind of questions. And I'm sure you guys would have figured it out by now, but this is probably going to come out in the midterms, similar to this. So that's why we are going over this today. And now we'll look at the first question first. One is, state the number of protons in atom V. So at the atom V is under the first, uh, first group, group 1. We have group 1 here. And have like 5 columns here. Okay, so R is here. And V is here. So, as you know, it is situated in group 1 because it has one valence electron. Okay? It has one valence electron only. And valence electron means the outermost electron in... Okay, let's say you have this configuration here. And this is the valence electron. It is the outermost electron. So... For the, the elements in group 1, they have only one valence electron. And so the first one would be 1. And then the second element here would be 2, 1. And then the third element here would be 2, 8, 1. And the fourth element would be 2, 8, 8, 1. So the pattern of it is quite similar for a majority of the groups in here. So as you progress down, you just add 8 and 8 and 18. So from 1, you have 2, 1, 2, 8, 1, and then 2, 8, 8, 1. So the question is the number of protons in atom V. We look at V, and the number of protons would simply be 2 plus 8 plus 8 plus 1. Um, add that together, and you'll get 19. So the answer would be 19. So what you want to know here is, you have to make sure that you know what this means. By being in group 1, they have how many valence electrons? By being in group 17, they have 7 valence electrons. By being in group 16, they have 6 valence um, electrons. In group 1, they have 1 valence electron only. So the first element, the topmost element, would only have 1. The second element... The topmost element would actually look like this. It only has one valence electron. And then when it progresses down, it will look like this. It's 2, 1. And then after that, you get 2, 8, 1 and 2, 8, 8, 1. So your answer would be 19 for 1A. Now we'll move on to 1B. When we state the nuclear number of R, if an atom of R has 12 neutrons, first of all, you need to know what nuclear number is. What nuclear number is, is actually number of protons plus number of neutrons. And this can be asked as in paper 1, it can be asked in paper 2 as well. So remember that nuclear number is proton plus neutron. When R, if R has 12 neutrons, so they have already told you that R has 12 neutrons, but now you have to find out the number of protons that R has. So R is again from group 1, and R is here. So again, I will repeat that group 1, there are one valence electron only for the elements in group 1. So the first element, topmost, will be 1. And then when it comes down, we have 2, two 1. And then the third element will be 2, 8, 1. And it goes on by adding 8, adding 18, and all that. So to find out the proton number for R, you just have to add 2, 8, 1 together. 2 plus 8 plus 1. And you get 11. So now you know that the proton number is 11. So to get the nuclear number, just take 11 plus 12. 
then you will get the answer. The answer will be 23. Okay, now we'll move on to see which element will form colored compounds. And the element that will form colored compound is W. So why is it W? The answer is W because it is a transition element. Transition element is the elements that are found from group 3 to 12. From group 3 to 12. So they have a distinct property for transition elements. They form colored compounds. Remember this, it can be asked as um, a subjective question as well. And I've also talked about this in my basic concepts of chemistry. I talked about the properties of transition elements. So sometimes they'll have more than one element here. Maybe they'll have W here and they'll have like V here. So both of these are transition elements and both can actually form colored compounds. One D. State the element that exists as a monatomic gas. Explain your answer. So, those in gaseous states are actually group seventeen and eighteen. Some elements in group seventeen are gas in gaseous state, and then we have group eighteen, which is in gaseous state as well. But they are asking for monoatomic gas. In group 17, they cannot form monoatomic gas. And the reason is because they cannot be stable on their own. Group 17 means that they have 7 valence electrons. And anything with 7 valence electrons is not stable. It looks like this. And then group 18 will look like this. Okay, this is complete, but this is lacking of one valence electron. It can only be stable if it has either duplet or octet electron arrangement. And duplet will be will look like this. This is stable. And it, if it has more than one shell, then it has to be octet to be stable. You cannot have empty spaces like this. There is supposed to be one more proton here, one more electron here but that isn't so this is not stable for group 17. But group 18 on the other hand is stable because it has octet electron arrangement. So let's get back to this question. State the element that exists as monoatomic gas. So your answer would be a compound from group 18. If you look here the compound from group 18 is U. So your answer would be U. And why is it U? because it has stable octet electron arrangement. Group 18 consists of inert gas. And why are they inert? They are inert because they have stable octet electron arrangement, so they do not have to share or donate electrons with other people or other elements because they are already stable on its own. It has octet electron arrangement, which is stable. The reason why... Um, other elements from other groups would have to combine with other groups, for example, NaCl, Na plus Cl minus, is because it is not stable on their own. Na plus itself is not stable, Cl negative itself is not stable, so it has to combine together to be stable. But as for group 18, they have octet electron arrangement, it is stable on its own. So this is why they will form monoatomic gas. Now we we'll move on to 1E. One 1E. One Arrange the elements R, S, D, U, V according to the atomic size in ascending order. Okay, so this is quite tricky. But say this is the periodic table. And how it goes is that as it goes down, the size increases. As it goes right, the size decreases. So size increases. Size decreases. So if you analyze closely and slowly, the answer will be U, D, S, R, V. 
among the five elements that they want us to arrange in ascending order and this is because you position somewhere here is the smallest because it is the highest okay because size decreases so this size will be larger than this size and this will be larger than this so this is essentially the smallest size and then we look at the position of D and we have S we have R and we have E so the next in line would be D because it is somewhere here so from here to here the size actually increases so this is smaller this is slightly bigger this is slightly bigger and then you come to here this is the biggest but the size increases as it proceeds down the group so this is even bigger you just have to compare slowly one by one i know it's a bit confusing but what you have to remember is when it goes down the size increases but when it goes to the right the size decreases once you know this it will be easier to solve this sort of question this is a favorite kind of question they always ask you to arrange according to size because they know it's confusing so just remember when it goes down the size increases when it goes to the right the size decreases one f the element v is more reactive than element r explain why so again we have um, r and v right here and element v is more reactive than element r explain why so to explain this we will have to draw out the electron configuration of both r and v as i said before the topmost would be one and then we have two one we have two eight one and two eight eight one so r would be two eight one v will be two eight eight one An element V is more reactive than R Y. Okay, so an element is actually reactive when it can lose electron easily. What it means is that it can lose electron easily. And V is more reactive, meaning V can lose electron more easily. So what I want you to imagine is this is a person here in the middle. This is a person and then this is another person. This is a person, this is another person. So, which one can get lost more easily? This one is nearer. So, they can hold each other tighter and it's not as easy to lose this one. But for this one, because the distance is further, it is harder for this person to hold on to this person. So, it can lose electron easily. And that is why V is more reactive. So, to understand this question, you have to actually have the image in your mind. You have to draw this out first. And then you can imagine why V is more reactive. G1, R reacts with Q to form a compound. What is the type of compound form? So now we look at the position of R and we look at the position of Q. R here belongs to group 1. And Q belongs to group 17. So as you can see, when you take 1 plus 7, you will get 8, which is the number for the stable octet electron arrangement. It's 8. So when 1 plus 7, you get 8, which means that the type of compound form is ionic compound. If it's a covalent compound, then you wouldn't get 8 when you add the valence electrons together. you get like 5 or 7, you won't get 8. So when you take the valence electrons and you add them together and you get 8, then an ionic compound is formed. Now we we'll look at G2. Draw the diagram of the electron arrangement for the compound form. Okay, so look at R. 
again I'm drawing these one two one two eight one so two eight one you have to draw out two eight and one and then okay so this is um r and then we have v i'm sorry we have q Q is the first compound in group 17, so you will have um, 287. You have 27. Electron configuration for Q is 27. So draw 27. Okay, so what happens when an ionic compound is formed is this will donate one electron here. But you don't need to draw the process out because they say draw the diagram of the electron arrangement form. So you don't have to draw out this process, but R actually loses one electron, uh, one valence electron, and this valence electron is actually donated to Q. So this is erased. This is donated to Q. So we'll draw this electron here, which is from R. Um, so usually we use a different symbol for electrons you can either use a dot or a cross so when it's donated from the other uh, element we usually use another type of symbol to represent the electron but once this is donated here this is actually gone so you're left with this and when you donate one you become positive so you have to bracket this entire thing write a positive sign here and when someone receives an electron it becomes negative so you have to bracket the entire thing and put negative here so this is the electron arrangement of the compound form and lastly we have g3 which is asking state one physical property of the compound form so the compound form is ionic compound and the physical property that they have is high melting and boiling point there are three physical properties, so you have to remember all of them. But G3, one physical property is high melting and boiling point. Other physical properties might be that they are soluble in water and insoluble in organic solvent. This is another physical property of ionic compound. So that's the end of question one.